Alrighty, so we do have that hunter versus hunter mirror. Um, pretty, pretty interested to see exactly how this does uh, go down. Um, you know, the, everything going to be mulligan there on, on the bottom side. The Savannah high main actually going to be kept. So, um, you know, Savannah high main keeping keeping a, a car that, that's that high in mana cost is it just basically thinking you know uh, it, it's too valuable to drop regardless. Uh, the deck is based sort of purely on that card, mm -hmm. like scaling into Savannah high main is what makes this deck so overbearingly powerful. So Now, if you were going first, would you have still kept it, even without the coin? Yeah, I still would have kept it. And okay. again, the reason is because it's so overbearingly powerful. So in a matchup like this, this matchup actually functions relatively similar to something like Warrior Wood, in that there's a lot of one-for-ones that get traded back and forth, and in the times when someone develops a huge amount of board presence, one person or another has unleashed the Hounds with Buzzard, or they a lot of times tend to fail to come back. So my game plan coming into this is, again, to be able to kind of trade one for one the whole time and then rely on Savannah Hymane's power to really push through the mid game and the late game and give me the edge. And give you that big value from that card. Right. So definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, now, interestingly, you both going with that tracking. Um, going to be the Scavenging Hyena as, as your choice. And he did uh, select that buzzard. Um, and just going to drop the Hyena, uh, you know, trying to get something down on the board here. Now, as your own choice, you can throw down your own Hyena. Seems like a pretty logical response. And um, I mean, you both have an Animal Companion available as well. Uh, but the fact that he's able to get his Animal Companion out first seems like it's actually a pretty, like, a pretty big deal. Um, now, I mean, were, when you see this come down, are you happy to see the Nisha? Were you, were you hoping it was something else? I mean, you know, do you think you were hoping for a Huffer in this situation? Or because you're talking about trading one for one, is the Misha kind of the best situation here? I, I think that Misha's okay. Uh, naturally, in this particular situation, I would love to have seen Leoc, okay. uh, because that makes all of my animal companions yeah. valuable on the other end. But in this position, given my hand context, I actually have to gamble with this Misha, or with this animal companion. If it ends up rolling Leoc, I suddenly find myself a little bit of a disadvantage oh, yeah. because either I'm going to have to use this Hunter's Mark in my hand yeah. or I'm going to have to find another way to follow it up with two damage. So, uh, of course, I'm anticipating Animal Companion coming out. Mm. And then when he makes a play like this second Animal Companion instead of having a Houndmaster, I'm going to interpret this as though he doesn't have a Houndmaster. And that's really going to change the way I play going forward. As you see, I play this Houndmaster instead. Yeah. And then sort of more alluding to that point, when he has the hyena going into my hyena, the reason he elects to trade his is because I still have the coin so I can follow up the Houndmaster. And that's literally the sole purpose of that trade. So the Houndmaster coin hyena comes out, or sorry, it's a hyena rather, not hyena, and uh, he's going to be able to drop his own. Um, so pretty interesting so far. I mean, you do have the silence. Now, I mean, silence kill command seems like a, like such a good answer. Right, this is the, the best That's answer the probably answer, in the mirror. Yeah. So, I mean, you have to be very happy about that play. Yeah, and, I, I'm feeling very good about this. I now have a 6-5 on the board, which is, again, the goal uh, of keeping it in the opening hand. I have this 2-1 owl in play, which, uh, honestly, I'd kind of rather not have it in play, but mm -hmm. I'm not disappointed to have it. Yeah. Uh, but more importantly, is going into this turn, uh, he doesn't have anything on the board, and he's behind in damage. Yeah. So when he doesn't Owl and Kill Command my Savannah High Main, it's mm. pretty much a given that he doesn't have Owl and Kill yeah. Command, especially... Uh, yeah, there's nothing better to use it on. Right, so it's, there's no reason to hold on to it. Yeah. So going into this turn, I feel extremely comfortable about not only my board position, but the rest of my hand as well. Okay, so now going for that board tells me he's, he's really trying to fish for an Unleash here. Um, I mean, that, that's, that's all I can really guess from that. Now... I mean, he could drop Timberwolf and try to do it that way. He could obviously go with Flare as well. Uh, and he's going to drop the Timberwolf, and I think he, he is just kind of hoping to get an Unleash here, you know. Uh, that's the only thing I can, I can really make out of that. And he does get that Unleash. Wow. wow. So he's going to be able to get the Unleash, and, you know, he, he can drop that. But no, he's actually, no, is he going to decide to do it? No, okay. Not yet, at least. Well, he wants to um, now he's going to trade. Now I have yeah, wow. Anymore. Okay, yeah. Uh, so he is going to be able to trade three out and clear the board if he wants. And that's, yeah, this I mean, is a train, huge train swing the two in the turn right here. Two is so big. <laughs> this is a huge swing in the turn right here. Yeah. Because if he manages to not draw this unleash, I'm actually going into my turn favored. Uh, yeah. And the only consideration he has to keep in mind is whether or not I have a buzzard unleash to counter this. So, but you do have the unleash with no buzzard, unfortunately. I'm now going to try to flare to get that buzzard. Um, and see if you can an uh, explosive trap. I mean, explosive trap isn't is the worst draw there, um, but you know it's it's no buzzard. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, oh god, he has the flare, which yeah. is which the, is the main issue with uh, it is that I am aware that he does like to run two flares. Yeah. So uh, given the hand context, I and was the, already aware. The high that main it, plus another ten rule. Yeah, I was already aware that when I drew that explosive trap, oh, no. that I have to rely on that getting some amount of value. Or I'm just going to lose the game because I'm like 97 cards behind at this point. Yep. <laughs> so. Yep. 
This big high is a really big problem. Yeah, well you can get the Unleash out and you can't really see Hunter's Mark that all. So why not why not decide to go for the Hunter's Mark there and, and, and trade that out with um with the hound, you know, and then you have two, two, there's two, two, twos versus the two, two, threes. This is sort of my version of a uh, BM conceding where I'm like, I'm just going to make you kill me because I have nothing left at this okay. point. I don't have a buzzard. I have no cards in my hand. My opponent's going in with, with not only fresh two, twos, uh, with the ability to pretty much play everything in his deck. Cause like, he only has a few cards left at this yeah. point. He's basically got everything. He I mean, needs. he has, he has 11 damage, uh, from the, the Leroy kill command. Uh, and then he can do the, the, the steady shot. So, you know, he has 13 there. I'm just has, completely out of cards. He has 19 This damage. isn't even really a matter of, like, whether or not he kills me. It's just yeah. purely... Like, he could just close his eyes and drag cards and basically kill me at this point because <laughs> he's got a third of his deck in his hand versus no deck in my hand. So, yeah. Uh, it's pretty much game over, almost yeah. regardless of how you slice it. And, I mean, he, um, I assume he, he could just go face. He can bring you one HP, and then he can kill you the next turn guaranteed, basically, with the... The steady shot, but maybe you're just trying to make sure there's no way you can come back and, and go with the Kodo. I mean, that's like the total safety play. That's right. Like at this the, point, at this point, uh, the, what his card game plan is going to be is just to make sure that there's an actual zero percent chance for him to lose this game. Yep. Uh, so that's exactly what he's doing. Yep. And I mean, it's, it's a safe play. I mean, there's such a, a small chance of him losing anyway, but it makes a lot of sense uh, to go for that. Um, going to be able to get that uh, lyric out, and there's the concede. So uh, unfortunately, he started off well, uh, you know, in that in that first series, but. Gonna fall to be 3-0. And I mean, even though he lost the first two games of the tournament, 